We are back on Nittany Game Week, 12th and final game of the regular season. Last game plan and opponent to worry over for a while. You certainly want to end on a good note before you find out the bowl destination. Our coaches have been busy studying the Spartans. It's been a season to forget for Sparty so far. Oh, they'd certainly love to spoil senior day at Beaver Stadium. Coach Paterno, Coach Bradley, what kind of threat does this team pose for the Nittany Lions? Todd, I'm going to just rebuke you. Do not talk bowls until you win this game. Everybody <laughs> says, what bowl? They go, you better win this one first. And let's talk about the tip sheet that we would give guys that when you look at their offense, two very good receivers. They're going to have some trick plays, some screens. The run game is struggling. They've thrown a lot of interceptions. Uh, and they're struggling to the field goal. So expect a lot of them to go for a lot of fourth downs. Defensively, you look at it. Pass rush is good. They're struggling against the run, struggling against the pass. So expect them to do some things differently. Net punting number one in the country. And one last note about this game. The last four years, Mel Tucker and Nick Saban have four road wins against ranked teams, tops in the country. So they're going to come in there ready to go. That being said, let's get into it. Wideouts. We talked about them. Jaden Reed right here. Keon on the outside, number one and number zero. Watch those 49 and 50 catches, Tom. You like mm. these guys. I like both of them, especially when they get in the slot. Yeah. And I like Penn State. Better be ready for them to go up top on this one. Yeah, and, and here's, here's one to read right here. Number one, he and the quarterback have been teammates since seventh grade, so obviously they're in sync. Here's zero coming off the ball. They got him down. He's, he's willing to go across the middle. He can go one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Let's talk about some more things that they do offensively. Now, we talked about the screens. Penn State has been blitzing, very aggressive, getting tackles for losses, getting sacks. And you know, Tom, that opens you up the screen game because the goal is to get your lineman and your back between the pass rush and the coverage. They do a nice job and here. Right here, you start playing your fire zones. Make sure your eyes are good. Make yep. sure your linebackers have their eyes good for the screen game. And when you're struggling the run game and with pass rush, one of the good things to do is to get the ball to your backs on the bump screens and get them down there. Let's talk some more about some of the things they do. We talked about trick plays. Mel Tucker has always loved the flea flicker. These guys do a nice job coming down, showing the block, and then releasing. It's all a matter of these guys fooling these guys. Especially if you get a little bit of the run game going and everybody starts getting aggressive. And they do a great job of selling this play. Yeah, this is like backyard football. You hand it off, the guy turns around, flicks it to you. A little better throw, they got a touchdown. So let's talk about them defensively now as we look at them. They're, they like their safeties to be involved in support. That puts their corners outside one-on-one, -on -one, and that's a slot matchup, Tom, that's tough. That's where Penn State's going to attack right there. Yeah, and you take a look at what they do to a slot here. Again, with the safeties involved, that guy defending the slot there is one-on-one, -on -one, and you'll see on this ISO here what a nice job the Illinois receiver does coming in here, selling them on the inside, getting them fooled. Penn State's got to take, care of the, take advantage of that kind of matchup. The other thing that you can do as we go to the next segment is you start to look at how do you get their corners to play off a little bit. You stack what should give somebody free release. And when you motion to these stack formations, this corner's got to play a little softer and he'll bail. And if you're willing to take those throws underneath, you could have a big you got game. Him. And here's the thing is, one thing that's going to come up is you got to communicate. I yep. know. Top, what are you playing? Top hat, what do you got? Like up yep. top, they're talking about it. Yep, and then let's talk about one other aspect of this thing now. Play action fakes. Again, they're aggressive with the linebackers, trying to get better at the, against the run. Good fake here, gets the tight end over the top. Expect Penn State to try and do some things like this. No question about it. Once again, trying to create some bad eyes on defense. Yeah. Again, they're coming downhill. They get them over the top, get the matchups, and those have always been good matchups for Penn State. And then let's talk about one last thing, one last element, is they're going to get into some third downs. They're good against, they're good, they have a good pass rush group. They're doing some nice schemes. They bring the, it's just a four-man rush, change the coverage, and you see that it creates confusion for the just quarterback. Just bogus here. pressure. You're showing like you're bringing five. It's just bogus pressure, and, and they get the down guys dropping. Well, you talk about bogus pressure. There is nothing bogus about this show, and certainly nothing <laughs> bogus about Todd Sadowski. Oh, there's no pressure when you're having this much fun. Thanks a lot, guys. And the Nittany Lions would certainly love to get double-digit wins for the season if they do take care of Sparty. On senior day, it will be the 101st career victory for Coach Franklin. So do the simple math. That's because the win at Rutgers is a milestone moment for Coach number 100 for his head coaching career. He takes some extra time afterward to celebrate with the fans who show up in Jersey. And according back to linebacker Curtis Jacobs, it's his dedication to detail and process that is a key to his success. 
he'll say he said things freshman year, and I'm just like, all right, like he's a little, he's a little like, he's a coach, like he has to say it. You feel me? But like when he comes in and says that stuff every day, and just like per, portrays himself every day, has a certain schedule that he goes through every day. I, I honestly strive to get that type of discipline in my life. And congrats to coach on hitting number 100. Time to take a break. When we come back, a very special impact interview with an amazing person, former Rutgers defensive tackle Eric Legrand. Eric talks about his impact on college football, his position as a radio analyst for the Scarlet Knights, and a new venture as a coffee shop owner. A can't-miss conversation with Eric Legrand is up next when Nittany Game Week returns.